Hey, yo, what is going on, everybody? It is the King Hitman on the Further Beyond podcast, but uh, we're back to the usual, all right? Y'all already know what's going on, man. I can't do this quite the same way without my special co-host, man. It's my guy. How does it feel to be back, Mr. Greg Dahl? Oh, rested, relaxed. It's it's great, man. I mean, you say you can't do it the same way, but you did it a very special way last week with Rado, and I really appreciate his time. Uh, we'll certainly be getting him in on, in the, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks um, to, to do all of us together. Um, yeah, yeah I, really that, that, I liked his that. idea of that. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited for it. So um, one thing I will say, this episode felt very similar to last episode. I mean, we could do a little rundown, you know, yeah, last we couple, meet Pansy. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, just like we ease through the world building and then we just get violence for like two minutes. So it's yeah. straight like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not so, like um, like world ending violence either. It's just kind of, we're, we're, it's kind of, Goku's fighting is very very reminiscent of like the the plot almost it's just it's setting things up he's getting it's warming used to up everything. for sure yeah it, we're warming up to the world and the story he's warming up to his new body and the world itself as well um so it was it was very fun very fun yeah yeah i, I really liked what they like I, I just keep saying it but i really feel that way i like what they're doing here there's nothing crazy going on yet remember people we're only five episodes in but with that being said we are at episode five of dragon ball diamond titled pansy now pansy is the little girl she well we find out she's not so little but uh the girl that she confronted the police force last episode and wanted to you know save that small village that desolate village yeah and she joins the group (laughs) yeah yeah that that dud basically she just she wants to question goku and like hey notice you're a little weird like what you got going on here you're definitely not like us they are not like us at all and she joins the group and they travel together. She's throwing questions out left and right. She's answering questions, honestly, but we notice there's one very dodgy character in the group, as per usual, man. Greg, uh, what what have you noticed about the whole series so far, about one specific guy? Are you talking Glorio? Yeah, we're talking Glorio, man. He just, he, he's giving he's a little shady. shady. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't he's... know. I don't know. I think, honestly, if I'm being proper serious, I reckon you were pretty close to giving uh, him a good assessment when you said he was a bit like Boba Fett. I think he might be a bit of a, um, pardon the pun, a bit of a hitman style character. Um, like he, I think he's a bit of a gun for hire because it seems to me that he he was approached by uh, uh, King Kadan, who we meet, who is, uh, spoiler alert, Pansy's father. Uh, it sounds like his task was simply to just go get people that could help. And he got people that could help and that's where he's at now so uh, i'm not sure what his task is from this point moving forward he's still traveling with them um but you mm-hmm. would assume he's still traveling with them because there are ulterior motives what they may be i'm not sure that um, right there yeah that that's yeah. what's really bizarre about it is so like you just said a moment ago that he was approached by the king it turns out the king said no he approached me with this idea and i was like fine like go do it so it seems like the king is funding glorio's journey his own goals but he doesn't quite know exactly we don't know what glorio's getting out of this now with all that being said we go through it we come to the castle they find out she like you said she's the daughter of kadan we're at kadan castle it's a very simple place like it doesn't seem like you know it's a bunch of laborers right you would think it's like a bunch of people in i don't know robes and gowns and like a royal family is more what i was expecting but it's very yeah. it's very calm yeah, it's, it's, it's very... not like king's landing in game of thrones so to speak like it's yeah not, it doesn't feel like uh, it is apparently the main kingdom of of the third demon realm but it doesn't yeah. give off that that super sprawling royal vibe it's got more of a uh, I guess uh, if I'm using the Game of Thrones analogy, more of that like Dragonstone kind of vibe, a little bit of a just a home base for a few people that consider themselves pretty high up, um, with, but in the grand scheme of things, not necessarily the top dogs uh, overall. And I mean, you said Pansy was a little girl. It's probably worth mentioning that you know she's 82 or whatever she said she was. One out of thousand, thousand years so, is the average know, lifespan. Yeah. So if we if we say humans are an average lifespan of 100, she's still just turned eight. 
You know what I mean? So in that context, she's still pretty young and naive, I guess, to a certain degree. But obviously consciousness and, and understanding comes in pretty, uh, pretty normal, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely was caught off guard. I mean, like, I figured she would be, she wasn't going to be like six years old, right? The demons seem to just be different than basic humans or earthlings for that matter seem to have short lifespans in the bigger picture so it made sense when i heard that but then i was i was thinking about it and i'm like you know i'm interested to see what a lot of the i, I guess yeah it seems like they're giving a heavy focus to the different features or the different just characteristics between the demons and the people that lie in the normal realms of normal universes i should say the and clearly world seems to be what they call yeah it. that's what she calls it exactly yeah and one of those things is just the lifespan now we get a little snippet it's very quick because we haven't seen these characters in a couple of episodes goma is taking good care of dende i mean what did you get out of that scene greg well, can you tell the tell the I audience like what was going because on because i think what that tells me is that the the i guess the motives or the the plots of the villains or the antagonists however you want to kind of describe them it doesn't seem to be uh an immediate plan for them you know what i mean like it's not like hey or, for example, it's not like they're gathering the Dragon Balls on Earth really quickly and you've got to stop them before they get all seven. And that's their current, you know, movement pattern. It sounds to me like they're just happy to wait it out until Dende's actually older again and they can actually use him to their advantage. It seems they're more than happy mm -hmm. to just raise him from a baby for their own purposes. And however long that may take is, is kind of up to them. And I guess that, I, I guess, kind of, ties into the last point you made about like the lifespan and the different versions of the different kind of beings that we find in the demon realm i i'm curious as to the phrasing that um pansy used when she was i think talking to goku i can't remember but she's like oh you don't have you've got round ears not like most margins and obviously the, yeah. the terminology used is not it's it's a little bit vague because she doesn't mean margin as in like margin boo margin seems to be like a, a demon Just kind of term broad for, yeah. term yeah demon uh, bread or demon heritage yeah yeah so i'm keen to watch back this episode again in the english dub to see how they phrase that um whether or not they they alleviate some of the the confusion on that or not but i'm also curious to know whether the the thousand year lifespan is a, a kind of a mostly set in stone thing no matter what your race is within the doom so like namekians for example oh yeah they, i see what do you're they saying for a thousand years as well like how old was kami at that point does it change when yeah. you're in or out of the demon realm I, I i'm not sure how that's going to work and that's where i'm a little bit curious to see and I, I i i probably believe that it's it's mostly mapped out in a very toriyama sense of like yeah look i know we said a thousand years but we kind of forgot about that and He's someone who's like 1500 years old. You know what I mean? We might, yeah. you know, never might be like two, like how long ago did the Namex leave the demon realm? It could have been 10,000 years ago and never was still the last one standing. So who knows? Um, I, yeah. I, I try to suspend my disbelief or whatever the, or whatever the right thing to say is like, I don't, yeah, like I don't we're read open into to it too retcons much. Yeah. And, and lore. Yeah. Uh, yeah we're, we're good. I don't we're think it's right. as strict as, as maybe what they say. I think it's a general, like, like I kind of said with like real life humans, our maybe average life expectancy is plus or minus a hundred years, but you know, not everyone lives to a hundred and some people live longer. It's, it's, it's just mm -hmm. one of those things where it depends on the life you live. And obviously with these guys getting uh, the life sucked out of them, depending on how they pay their taxes. I mean, not totally unrealistic, but you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a world that has its rules and stuff like that. But I, I, with I like that, I actually, I, I got something for you. Uh, so okay. with the last couple episodes, we, well, pods for that matter, we were wondering if Deborah was going to be remembered favorably yes. as a king. Like he yes. had the statue we kept trying to figure out. Like, do they like him? Like, it seems well, like at, at home, was... maybe. And then they said something. They said, I mean, Goma's bad, yeah. but he's definitely like, Deborah was a lot easier than this. This is yeah. ridiculous. Well, so it's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of tension that's going to gonna be that, born. I think, uh, I think there's two ways to read that. And I personally think that it's, 
I think we're sort of similar. Uh, we're, we're kind of not wrong in the sense of thinking that maybe he was a pretty chill king, all things considered. And this and what what was said is probably leaning into that. But I think when they say, look, he he drove a bit of a hard bargain, even though Gorm is more strict. I think that just might be the lower folk just not liking being lower folk in comparison to what a king must do as a ruler. You know what I mean? Like we have leaders in the real world that yeah. we don't particularly like or agree with or even their policies or whatnot. And I think that's just part of the, that's just what happens. I guess when you lead, you have to make hard decisions and it's not always going to benefit the people from top to bottom in terms of a socio kind of thing, no matter who they are in the moment, but maybe down the track, what decisions you made might benefit you later and things like that. But when, when you're not in the position of power, it's easy to look upon the decisions that people in power make and go, oh, that's really bloody stiffed me, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I don't think he was a super strict guy. I still think yeah, like whoa. that Hercule level statue where he's holding up the peace sign. Hey, that could be a red herring, I don't know. Maybe he was a really hard bastard and, the, and he commissioned a statue like that to make him appear more chill. But yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not we'll, sure. We'll definitely figure it out. Um, because it seems like they're slowly giving us more and more to figure out what the reign of Goma is gonna be like, juxtaposed to the reign of Deborah. So it's interesting. Just that little snippet of he had Dende in the cradle, and he's like you're saying, yeah. he's taking a good care of him, and he's <laughs> he's giving her the goal of like hey make sure you raise him well because he's gonna make us a new set of dragon yeah, balls exactly which then circles back to the side goal of the main plot right now with goku and the gang is they're gonna fight the tamagami now they go into yeah. kadan yeah, castle yeah. you know Ponzi is the princess they speak to the king like i said earlier the king said he didn't realize that glorio was putting up a front like a slight little front but he's like no glorio came to me and i was just like sure like whatever but um Versus what Glorio said, which was the king called me to go get you guys. That's not yeah. what happened. So, yeah. yeah, it just, it gives us a side plot of the Tamagami. Goku is head ab above heels to go fight them. Like, we know how he is. So, that's going to be something they get into probably. If not, I actually think next episode isn't going to be about the game, the main, uh, like, Goku and Glorio and Shin. Yeah, and they're gonna and finally, he too. said his name. Thank goodness. He said his, his first name. That way I could just say Shin from now on. Shin uh, and yeah. Panzi, I think it's going to transfer back to Hybus. We meet a new character at Kadan Castle towards the end of the episode who seems to be, maybe he's just like a jester or a laborer or just assistant to the king but uh kadan is like hey hibis come over here and he's like uh what do y'all want man what you what's going on man need you to go to earth he pulls out a radar it's very similar to boma's yeah, dragon, dragon radar, radar. Yeah. and he's like is this where you want me to go yeah we need you to go to kami's lookout go pick up a couple people what's funny about this demon world is like wait goku when he got there was like this isn't as bad as I thought it would be, right? Like, more or less, when you hear the term demon roam, and later that episode, the plane gets stolen, right? Kadan says to his people, hey, come here. We only got small planes. Y'all go over to the other gang. I don't know what the, he said, like, Neo, Neo fight or something like that. Yeah, it's like, go the over there the gang, yeah. and go steal their plane. They have a mid-sized plane. Go take it. And it seems like theft is just so normal. Like, they just take from each other, right? So it's kind of funny. But um, it, it's just giving extra aspects. Like, it shows the interactions of the demon world. Like, they are, you know, pretty straightforward. Whatever they want, they, it's more of a take world than a give and receive. So it's well, definitely, it me, I just um, like Star things Wars like vibes. that. And you brought it up before. Yeah. It does give me Star Wars vibes. You know what kind of vibes I also got from this? Because I watched, for anyone listening, I watched episode four and five, one after the other. Because I was away last week, I didn't get a chance to watch four at the time, so I kind of just shot with Gundam both. I'm getting, weirdly, I get like Zelda, Twilight Princess specifically kind of vibes. There's this, I don't know why, but I'm getting this like, there's no real hierarchy left. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why I get those kind of vibes. But you know when you, I don't know if you played the Zelda games, but you know when you go to like, there's the, the Moblin bosses and stuff. They feel like the gangs, there's the villagers. They have yeah. their, their, their problems with the gangs, but it always seems to coexist in a mostly peaceful way with the odd raid here and there. And Goku's kind of link coming along and making sure that they stay safe, maybe during a certain period of, 
of unrest and things like that. And I don't know why I just got yeah specifically Twilight Princess, but in general it was like Zelda vibes. It was it was interesting, uh, and I'm yeah, really enjoying it, it definitely. so far. I like it. I like the just like I said, just world building more and more. We usually don't get this level of it in each episode no. of Dragon Ball. Maybe that's why I have to keep using that buzzword so much. But just back to the main plot, we see towards the end of the episode. You know, I noticed in the castle room when Kadan says, "Like yeah, he came and got me." Shin gave him a little side eye. Another oh, thing we've been focusing on. Yeah, the, it, the tension is building. It's mounting very soon. I think I lost you again. Like, right. whatever. Like, I, he, he kind of like, damn, they're starting to put two and two. Like, slowly put two and two. And Shen's been suspicious the whole time. He well, talks to mention. Goku on the side. Sorry. Yeah, Go what happened? Keep there was a mention of Shin's combat ability. Uh, in the in the in the throne room, they guessed you know, it a little like, bit. Whatever. Yeah, they're like, oh, we got the most powerful guys or whatever. And Shin's like. He, he, he th I think he mentions um, earlier that he's not totally useless, and then when he yeah. when he's being compared to Goku, he's like, mate, not even close, uh, and which I thought was kind of cool. But I'm wonder, I'd love it, and I really would love it if if Glorio kind of um, if he pulls a 180, which wouldn't be a total 180. Ooh, a little heel seen, turn, huh? I would like to see Shin take the reins. A little oh, hand, a, see... hand to hand, a little fist to cuff. Yeah, so get a little seems, duel. Yeah, I'd like to see that come to a head because. I don't, I, I don't know if I'm, I mean, Goku's severely underpowered anyway, but I just don't, I, I like the idea that Goku doesn't have to take on everyone. And I, yeah, like, I get the, that. The, like the power scaling level of things. I like it when there's little pairings here, like, like 17 versus Piccolo and, and like, um, yeah. like Vegeta versus the Zaba, rivalries like, for sure. The well, inner yeah, rivalries. They're, they're kind of on the levels of each other and who's, who, who's actually stronger in these pan. Cause look, let's face it. This is the Goku show. He's going to beat everyone eventually. So I like the mm -hmm. idea of, you know, Shin versus Glorio, for example, or I'm just, just out of nowhere, you know, like Degasu versus Vegeta. It might work yeah. that way, and, and I'd like to see that because I'd like to see Shin be less useless. If, yeah, and I don't mean to be yeah, cruel about we're that. Curious just, about him. He, he seems yeah, to be a, an escort a lot, in, at least in the Dragon Ball Super days. You know, he did do a bit in the I Buu mean, arc, but even in then, the Buu arc, I mean, I would say he was he he clearly drastically overrated the enemies that were in front of him. Right? He underestimated the Saiyans. Yeah. He didn't understand how strong they were. He gets to Earth. He's like, yeah, we need job, but. Y'all can't handle anything that Bobbity has in store. Like, you guys need to be fully prepared and, like, make sure you use your full abilities. They're like, no, like, we, we can sense their power. They're not like that. And Shin makes it clear. I could one-shot Frieza. Like, I, Frieza can't yeah. touch me if yeah. I stepped in. However, he then drastically downplays his allies and who's around him because him and Kabito just are not good at understanding the Saiyan's power, the potential that they have. So... I want to see if if that's something they emphasize and, oh, no, maybe he had realized slightly after the boo arc, like, no, I got to get back in the lab. You know, I can't catch up, maybe, but I definitely got to be stronger than this. Well, I would hope was... they make Glorio stronger than, you know, Cell or something like that. I don't want him to yeah. be level with Shin, but I definitely need that duel. So well, I need Shin... Shin to step up to the plate. Shin showed all the courage in the world versus Boo. You know what I mean? Like, he... Yeah. He knew he was outmatched by all means, but he he made sure that he stood his ground and did things. He just to is so like, scared of like pui pui, bro. Yeah, I can't. I'm yeah, like, dog. Yeah, that what are odd. we doing here? But I liked how he like he was like, no, I'll stand up to Boo to a point where I can get Gohan out of here because this is this yeah. is necessary. You know what I mean? So, and and I mean, kind of a little bit of a change of pace in conversation. But they mentioned that there's not a lot of um, oh, I've forgotten the name now, but Shin's race. There's not a lot of them Glins. left either in the Glins, yes. Yeah. Not a lot of them left either in the second demon realm, which is where they're originally from. So I'm curious. I, I, I was kind of disappointed with that almost. I because the Namics have already kind of cleared out. I was I'm hoping that like any there reference was a world to of them, right? I'm know, telling you, yeah. bro, the trees, the just, just yeah. fields of trees, <laughs> yeah. bro. Maybe just a golden tree trees there somewhere. Um yeah. but no, I was kind of hoping that they they maybe went one for one. Like, yeah, sure, one of the races that we know comes from the Demon Realm did clear out. Another one that we know is from the Demon Realm is still there, you know what I mean? Like, make it colorful yeah. in that way as opposed to turning it into the, some desolate place that everyone seems to escape from. I'm not... 
I wasn't super stoked on that, but hey, maybe there's a reason for that. And maybe there is, you know, maybe Zamasu's dad's running the show there and he's given everyone a hard time. I'm not sure. But um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They they emphasize the third demon world is the one like Bigger. people want to leave. Like they don't come out here. This is not a vacation spot. They, people don't come out here unless it's business oriented. So when you hear things like that you would think the second one is going to be more i guess maybe they're going to be more what's the word uh peaceful like the vibe is going to be a lot lighter they're more not going to be maybe as yeah they're going to be more welcoming as you see like just his demeanor shin's demeanor degasu's demeanor is a lot different than a lot of the people we're seeing in the bars in the third world or even the king yeah. like emphasis going back to the castle when goku walks up he's like this ain't all alley. This is a castle. I mean, like I guess. And yeah. Pansy's like, well, this is the nicest in the third world. So stop hating on it, basically. And Glorio is like, yeah, like imagine Kadan is like an uncivilized mob boss, like mafia, like Don. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's more gonna be a lighter, more formal. Like we just said with the castle, it wasn't formal in there at all. We expected more rich vibes, right? Uptight vibes. Said, Maybe um, the second world is gonna be like that. They also said that the third world was the biggest. Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah. So, so I so. think we might spend a majority of time there, possibly, because it, you know, physically speaking, we can traverse the the second and the first a little bit quicker, possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe maybe we just get out of there, and knowing that it's the biggest, uh, we can spend more time on some of the more you know the fights or the relationships even that develop in the second and the first you know if we do go and meet a couple more of shin's race or or we want to spend some time on some of the fights with the um the guardians of the dragon balls we can do that knowing that we don't have to actually explore the second and the first as much as what we do in the third so um there's yeah. a bit like that i want to ask as well do you think we saw the queen of the third world uh next to king kadan there at the end, she was also training some of the fighters. I noticed she had, she had like similar armor. Oh, that's who you thought. Yeah, oh, I didn't. I was wondering because they they showed her multiple times. I was wondering what her role was. I thought maybe she was like his second in command or something. Could You're be. right. That might be the queen. I like that. So I have no idea. Listen, I don't even want to jump to conclusions with that one. But I I like the idea of her being king. You're emphasizing the size of the world, bro. One thing. It's only been a day for them. Like, well, in yeah, true. the whole timeline, like the five episodes, it's been about a day and a half, maybe, because he gets to the castle and he's like, yo, bro, I was here yesterday. What are you, yeah. <laughs> let me in. Well, and so it, it just opens it back up how time is flowing. Like they were at the hotel last night, right? Yeah. Do you think it's a time thing like the Hyperbolic Time Chamber where it's different? That's what I thought at first. And then I'm like, Hold on, what exactly is night to them? Like, how long? Because even on Namek, like, Namek has never seen night unless uh, Shenron is summoned. So it could be something like that. Maybe a day last 45 hours for them. I'm really interested. Remember, what do you think is going on? Do you remember how long Bulma said she would take to fix the ship? Oh, was it? I, I almost want to say, damn. I almost want to say she said 10 days, but yeah. It, yeah, I might be wrong. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I think that would probably be your best indication to work out that question of like how long. You're is, right. You know, what I mean, like if it's a day in the demon realm, that might be two weeks in 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 Earth because we've got Hybus heading back there. He said it might take yes. a while because it's a little bit far away, but um, yeah, maybe she's finished by the time he gets to her, and that's been your fortnight. I think they've got a four day trip now. Is it in the ship? Did they say? Yeah, uh, to get to the Tamagami is the opposite uh, side of the, basically opposite of where they've been heading. So yeah, he said yeah. four days. Yeah, so and knows, the plane uh, just crashed. <laughs> but then, like I said at the beginning, I don't read into those things too much because I mean, I I, I I apply what I'm gonna keep. Toriyama the, time. Tor yeah, Toriyama <laughs> logic, basically. Like, oh, I kind of forgot that I said that. You know what I mean? Like, episode five yeah. already. He's like, oh, wait, bomb is gonna take two weeks. Yeah, I forgot about that. I just said it was a day. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I I do like the idea of the time being different because at this point they're showing us all the things that are going to be different between the two. I think next episode is going to be emphasizing Hybus going. Like we might just sit co-pilot with Hybus as he goes to Earth. We see what's going on. He explores. Going to be. 
Yeah, yeah, I think next episode is going to be more about him while Pansy's repairing the plane, right? It's yeah, not going to yeah, be I think that's Goku exactly. centric. They'll start off, Pansy's repairing, oh, it's going to take me a couple of hours and then cut to Hybus heading over to Earth. Mm -hmm. And then I think they might even cut between Hybus's, uh trip to Earth and possibly a little bit more into the, the antagonists, what Degasu, yeah. Dr. Arin, maybe even Dr. Arinsu, because, you know, she's over there as well now. So... Uh, we, we, we haven't heard from her since episode one, I don't think. Um, so we'll see what happens because Goma seems like he's pretty happy. He's just chilling. He's just running the show now. He's got his yeah. dynamic. He's not, he's, <laughs> he's not progressing. He's not putting too many plans in place, at least uh, in relation to the main cast. He's, he's just running the realm now. He's just um, baby. He's raising his nephew. Yeah. You would think like Dende is family to him, bro. It's so funny. Just him in the cradle in the room by itself is is hilarious. But yeah, I think we're <laughs> gonna move into chapter two now, like where where the rest of the cast by episode the end of episode seven, yep. I reckon we'll see Goku and Vegeta together, uh, and, and whoever yeah. else, Bulma and Piccolo and and all those kinds of things. Uh, oh, speaking of Vegeta, I ain't gonna front. I I want you to hold that thought real quick. We do have to get into one thing from last episode. Me and Rao, we put a heavy focus on the Medipills, like the, uh, the little the ball goat, the insect. Yeah, what do you think is going on with that? Do you think we will see a new fusion? Do you think we'll see a new form, or do you think they'll keep it very mundane, very level, and maybe we cap out at Super Saiyan three or something like that for a little well, mini Goku? Well, firstly, you mentioned something that I thought was a real possibility, and I, I am torn between whether I want it to happen or not, whether he just drops the bag and that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it could just be the gag that you've set up these, these sensu beans and these fusion items, and Goku just does Goku things and just literally fumbles the bag, and it's just impossible now. Uh, I think that would be funny. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm all for that. But then I also, I think we spoke a little bit off air how it'd be odd to not have a new form of some sort. Uh, a, a, yeah. friend of the, a friend of ours in, in the eight-star chat, uh, Celtic Link, he said uh, poss possibilities of a, this being a bit more GT referential than, than, than we might have thought and maybe a, a new version of Super Saiyan 4. I personally don't want that. We have GT. I need it. I'm, uh, as much of a fan, like I, I, I froth G, uh, GT I itself and, it. and Super Saiyan 4, but we have that and I'm happy with that. I really am. I, I don't hate GT like, like a lot of the community does. I have it. I'm satisfied with it. I don't want them to just do a, a, a reboot of that. Uh, yeah. I prefer, I prefer a new fusion. You know, if we've got Goku, we've got, sorry, if we've got Gogeta, we've got Vegito now, whatever the bug fusion is, you know, Kakar. C Kakarita or I, I, I don't, we don't I even know. we're running yeah. out of names dog. Yeah, we we're not running yeah. out of names we already even got if, Veku you know, like, yeah I was going to say Veku <laughs> and, and we, we, they don't have uh, a skinny I don't one, think do we got yeah they don't have the skinny fusion name no but yeah, I'd prefer that I'd prefer something along even if it's just the kid fusion you know what I mean like I, yeah. I would prefer that because it's not necessarily new but it is it doesn't break Thing, like so Beast Gohan, for example, kind of broke open a lot of questions as to how that works and where it comes yeah. from. I don't yeah. need that so much. I would just be satisfied with him going, hey, look, we've got bugs here. The moment. So, yeah, yeah Shin, Shin doesn't have to take his earrings off this time. We can just eat a couple of bugs. Vegeta might be happier with that. You know what I mean? I'm not sure what his stance on eating bugs to fuse would be. As opposed to doing a dance or putting on oh, earrings. Oh, crap. Um, you know something? There's a chance he'll just say no. Because what's you yeah. know what Vegeta's greatest fear is, right? What's that? It's worms. Vegeta hates Where? worms. So Where's he that might, from? Yeah. Yeah, the Boo Saga. Like, his, one of his biggest... Goku's fear is needles, and Vegeta's fear is worms. So Vegeta might see an insect and be like, bro, I'm not eating that. Like, you're crazy. But at the same time, we've seen Vegeta eat, like, early Z, right? The start of yeah. Z. When he's yeah. eating on the insect planet in the filler. So, well, even before when Raditz uh, transmits to them, I think yeah, when yeah, he was telling the them what was going on. But yeah, uh, yeah, just there's a lot going on there. So now that we've opened that can of worms, no pun intended, but I like what I did there. The idea of, because if we do it, if we have a new form, then people are going to be like, bro, but this is before Super. So now you're going to yeah. tell me Goku had all and these forms in Super and we just didn't. Yeah, yeah. So that's just I, not a conversation I I'm interested it. in. 
um, personally. I mean, look, if, if, if you differ, by all means differ. It's just my personal kind of point. Um, but I do have a few character questions, whether they be interactions or just things in general. First one being straight up, have we seen Gohan? Uh, since the party? Nah, I don't think so. Was he at the party? He was at the party, right? I don't even know if he was. Ooh, damn. I'm just curious. Oh, That's wow. Uh, now that you're saying it, I actually want to go to episode one and look. So shoot, while you're talking about that, but <laughs> yeah, back to the form, but just real quick, I just want to say this: with the forms, one loophole they could have is like Goku only has access to this knockoff Super Saiyan four form in the Demon World. Because back to my little, you know, oh, side you plot possibility, yes, exactly just the idea. Say. I just, I just saying. If the Saiyans came from the demon world after all these years and yep. we had no idea, you know, it makes sense if Goku at home base got a little extra power boost. Maybe he becomes like a Super Saiyan 3.5 real quick for a couple episodes and he's never able to access it outside of uh, Universe 7 or 6 or anything like that. He can't do it in the demon outside of the demon realm. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Well, just a little like idea. 3.5, like you said, like a, a pseudo kind of transformation, but not quite. What do you think about the uh, the temporary transformation to Super Saiyan? And and I have to mention it. It was beautiful to see how they kind of didn't go the whole hog, but kept a little bit of the aura. I, I really like yeah. the, the art style. And, yeah, and that shot was stuff. fire. Oh, but the whole movement of it all, how he was just like, no, I'm just in a bit of a flow state in between base and Super Saiyan almost. Like he, he popped it just to kind of activate it, but didn't keep it almost you know what i mean he's just like no yeah. i'm just gonna tap into he that just wanted to get them almost. off him for sure yeah it was cool yeah and the other character i liked it the other character question i have is what do you think the interaction will be between never and piccolo especially now that piccolo or piccolo has like kami but kami is not the other side of this piccolo it's uh the old uh, king piccolo do you think, and I think surely never is like smart enough to sense that. Yeah, wise for sure. Um, he's probably going to question him like, you have latent abilities that most Namics haven't seen in generations or something like that. You're going to see some weird, in, well, some dope interactions like that. I'm definitely going to pay attention to what abilities he gives Piccolo and Dende. We even episode one, we were focusing on that and seeing what that was going to lead to for Dende himself. Maybe they fuse at the end of the series. Maybe he absorb. Oh, well, listen, we're not even going to go down that road again yet. But uh, no. yeah, I want to see what he does with Piccolo because even, you know, superhero emphasizing Piccolo's dynamic heritage, it seems like Toriyama wanted to re he always I was told I don't this is something I can't just confirm right but yeah it was like Piccolo was one of his favorite characters it was, whenever yeah, I, would no, look I at, when I did that little tribute video yeah he said multiple times that almost every iteration of Piccolo whether it be Demon King yes whether it be Piccolo Jr whether it just be Piccolo himself he 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 related to him a little bit more he gravitated he, he enjoyed writing him a lot more so um yes yeah that's why which he was actually his opens up with Dragon Ball Evolution, like just the terrible depiction of Demon King Piccolo, and I've been told that was the spark that made Toriyama it be was, like, "Nah, yes. let me get, let me put the pin back to this pad. Let me show y'all what's up." Maybe yeah. just seeing his favorite character be depicted so terribly made him that angry that we got all of this back. So we gotta thank Evolution one more time, man. Just appreciate you so much for being so terrible. Whoa. But yes, there's a lot. We'll there's a lot review. here. Hopefully we'll do that. Review. Oh yeah. man, oh jeez. I'm gonna force oh, you to man. watch that. Um, I absolutely can't, bro. You will. I'll make you up. Um, <laughs> the, the other question as well, do you think Never knew uh, Kami slash Piccolo slash the being that they were before. I think he could have. I think, I think he did a as well. Very fair chance he did. Do you think that? Oh man! Do you think that I, if I'm Piccolo call it recognizes the him, that would be crazy. I'll call it the nameless Namekian because I think that's what Piccolo called himself when he first fused with Kami again. But yes, like I, I remember in like the Garlic Junior, like the the whole history with that. Even though that's not the canon or whatever, I, I I hate that conversation. But like the whole story behind all that is that you know Garlic. I think it was Garlic Senior and the nameless Namekian were going for the role of the protector or god of earth together. Yes. The nameless Namekian got it 
over Garlic Senior, who got the shits, and, and that's the whole villain arc there. But in the process of getting the position, the Nameless Mechian had to split his good and evil parts. So do you think that he came across himself for that? Or do you think he came across with the migration of the Namekians and just found himself in a position where he could apply for this role, so to speak? Oof. Uh, there would be a lot uh, a lot there for me to go back and dust off because yeah. one thing, I'm rusty on the real, real old sections of, of Z, right? like early Z movies. I would, I would think that they're going to clarify it. I think what happened with Kami and all of his journey on earth. And I, I get like you, the boundary between Canon and non Canon at this point is just pointless, right? It's all yeah. dragon oh, ball yeah. now, yeah. but I understand where you're coming from. I think if they want to quote unquote, canonize it, they'll, they'll retell that story, right? They'll tell it their own way and be like, Hey, we always told you that Kami split. It seemed like it happened at the lookout. So that gives me the idea that the nameless Namekian, even if he was raised on Namek, maybe like you're saying, we, we're not clear on how old the Namics are. We're not clear on when they migrated. All that stuff is so much in the air that they could just say, hey, go back all the way. And we could tell you where it started with the nameless Namekian before he was Kami and before he was Piccolo. So I think all of that will be opened up if they want to open it up. But I just think the idea of seeing piccolo walk up to him and and maybe he recognizes yeah. him like he's like that's yo you're I'm familiar you're like yeah. that's scary how i i reckon he's done that before i can't no you know what it was what i'm thinking of when he saw shin he was like yo something is off with him bro like yeah yeah, yeah. it's not just that he's creepy and, and small in stature but like no, something but in his him. aura is yeah. yeah it's almost as if it was the first time you could argue that a character had the idea of being able to sense god key because remember once again yeah. Yeah, yeah, shin yeah. wasn't really that strong shin was not a super powerful warrior in comparison to the rest of the z fighters so it was like piccolo's like no there's something eerie about him bro so all of that could just get wrapped up in a perfect bow right now have 20 said, 30 years later it'd be crazy have they said where the which realm of the demon realm the namekians hailed from they have One, two, not three. not that i've noticed do no. you think that the second realm could be like uh a, a more i guess i don't know how to phrase this properly but like where where di deities come from i, I don't know how to oh the, the yeah the but essentially like, the the godly realm where yeah, it begins to of. you know you so see like, god key and god aura and theoretically maybe that's where uh the angels or or the 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 party of uh, uh zenny and and weiss and, and all those kind of beings maybe they pull from the second demon realm knowing that they Shoot, have i actually think tendency. the higher levels will pull from one we'll see but that, I, I think oh, that well, yeah good. either or but I just, only because the sh the Shin race is from the second one. I'm wondering if they may be all together on the second one, and maybe you know they pulled the nameless Namekian that was Kami and Piccolo from that to to have a look. Maybe they pulled Garlic Senior as well to say these are our best two candidates for for yeah. uh, protector of Earth. They pulled Shin and and maybe two or three others to be the the candidates to be you know the Supreme Kai to be. You know how they all the west north east and south underneath the main supreme kai at the time you know maybe they just pull from that realm going well no this is actually the ones that we typically go through you know we pulled zamasu here to put under goasu and, and things like that whether or not they're all from the same place or not i'm not sure whether they put that much thought into it who knows maybe they don't and again maybe it's just toriyama things being like i don't know they're all from here man somewhere who knows yeah first of all you did your thing i like when you get those moments you just you're opening up a lot for oh, my so head I, runs. yeah yeah i don't have anything for for that one i ain't going front but i would love to know what the audience thinks about that one one thing i guess it's at that point we might have to start wrapping it up one yeah, thing i'll yeah, say sure. is i am excited to say that if it's not tomorrow it'll be the day after i'm gonna go see diamond's english dub premiere it's in a, a couple theaters oh, near me see it seems like for it yeah cool yeah yeah so it'll it'll be quite the experience you know it's on I love netflix just as well moments like that oh yeah oh so yeah. i could just well, save I, my it, money oof well, i just might is, have to well this is hard to sort of confirm for uh, a worldwide level kind of 
potential audience like we may have yeah. because we don't have it in Australia in the cinemas at all um, I don't think and if it would be it would be maybe major capital cities like Melbourne and Sydney in very select cinemas like that's usually how things work over here um, but I do know that I think it's up to episode 3 currently is on Netflix because my brother watched up to that, that and in like, English? yeah in, oh, I'm 99% sure I don't think Jez would bother otherwise but um, what the hell? Yeah, I, I'm, I even. I, I've eyes. been looking Netflix for an English voice or an English line or a clip in English. I haven't seen it at all on, on social media. Wrong, but I even checked my partner's Netflix and it had like, yeah, Dymo episode one, two, and three. I, and I was going to, hopefully before the next episode, I was going to try and watch as much in English as I could just to kind of see how things were. And not necessarily for the English itself, but more for the differences. Just, you know, there's always those little yeah, translation that. differences that I'm, I'm always fascinated in. Um, and, and I'll be honest too, because I, I personally, and this again, just my personal assessment, I thought the, the dub for super is shit house. I really don't think they're doing it. They did a great job on we that. Are, and and I'm a dub do. defender. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge Except Zamasu is safe. Dispo in English is safe. Um, you know why Zamasu is safe? I like safe? Topo in English too. Cause he's the same guy that did Piccolo. We love it. We love it. You see how we all circle back, man. But did, did you hear he, he was on? Um, did you ever watch Smallville growing up? Nah, I I know my my family loves that show. I never got into it. So James, I'm more Masters, of an Arrow guy. Enough, James Masters was on that show. Uh, he played Brainiac, oh, okay. I believe, a Superman villain called Brainiac. Um, that is the actor who played Demon King Piccolo, by the way. His name is James Masters. Uh, he was on mm -hmm. a podcast that is done by Michael Rosenbaum, who played Lex Luthor in Smallville. So they kind of had that connection and they got on and they had a chat. And there's a clip. If you ha you have to have a look at it. It's on, I, what's it called? Inside of You, I think the podcast is called. Uh, and James Masters, there's a clip of him talking about um, Dragon Ball, basically. And he's like, he was so kind of, shamed by how bad that movie was he fell in love that, with it. yeah yeah go ahead, well, no, go ahead. he, he, yeah, he felt an obligation to give back to the fans of dragon ball yep. with a good performance but what he also did is he requested that his name in the credits of dragon ball super was not his name be changed i forgot what, what they, they call it in uh, I can't literature or well, it's a stage name i guess you'd call it but yeah um, there's like a term yeah but he wanted it to be so that no one would Put those connections together unless they were like deep cut fans which obviously it's crazy i, I um, love this story man. Nah, me it's too crazy. man it's, it sounds like such a good dude thing to do yeah it's not just like hey I, I i love the franchise i want to be a part of it again it doesn't matter if the project's good or bad he's like no i want to make up for but what what's I crazy did. he said he didn't know about dragon he didn't know much of dragon ball before he got shamed for the demon king piccolo role and then once he was like all right maybe these fans are so hardcore for a reason then he yeah. looked into it and was like oh this is fire oh yeah, yeah. i gotta make it up to them like yeah. that's so yeah i love it i like it's it man more than just for like those that don't know thing. he's greg is telling y'all a fire story man i hope y'all paying attention but yeah the it's just it's it, it hits on more than one level it's not just a professional going i was in a bad movie and i want to you know right that wrong for my career kind of thing because that could have been as simple as it could have been you know he could have been like mm -hmm. oh, he might not have even said dragon he might have been like i would like to be in my hero academia i just want to i want the anime community as, as a large to know that i'm not just <laughs> you know whatever and, and look if he'd have done that to be honest that would have been fine he just wants to exist in a positive light as an actor in certain realms but he said more than that. he's like no i want the fans of this franchise who i basically pseudo disrespected you know, he didn't make the movie. He was just in it. And you can't give him too much stick for that. he I'll be honest, he did his best. It was a crap yeah. movie with a crap script and it was a crap role. Like, what do you do? It's like, just you a can movie only do filled so with people who don't care about Dragon Ball for real. Like that was at that time when that movie dropped, that's what it was. And it was seeing, it was seeming through the screen. Like you could hear it, you could see it, you could smell it. Yeah. They were a bunch of people who wanted to make money off the name Dragon Ball. They had no idea what was going on. They had I no would, idea what to pay I homage to, what the, to be loyal to. I agree with that in the realm of the suits, like the the producers and the, and the people behind the scenes that was there. I don't blame any of the actors. I think, you know, they've got to work. 
they're offered a role, they go, okay, cool, I'll do. Yeah, this I, w- role. I wouldn't and say I, take and it, I th- turn it down. Yeah, of course. No, and and I think there's a there's an element of that where like, yeah, look, not everyone knows everything about every franchise, and that's completely okay. And when you're offered a movie, you can only do what the script says and what the director tells you to do. It's not necessarily like there's only so many Henry Cavill's out there. They get in arguments with the people that, you know, are mm-hmm. telling him what yeah. to do. And like, yeah. that's not what the source material is. That's like. not what the character you know I mean? would do. Yeah, exactly. Like, that yeah, doesn't like, sound like it. Like, you know who a... else is? Um, now we're, we're geeking out. We're closing oh, yeah. in on an hour. Yeah. We're geeking out. Um, the guy for so for me, we always talk about Star Wars every episode, right? And I'm not even the craziest Star Wars fan, it just feels Nor similar I. I like for it me. A lot, but yeah, yeah. Um, the I want to find his name now, I gotta find his name because I gotta be respectful. Who's that? The actor who played in The Force Unleashed, the main character, Star Killer, oh, um, he, that is because he was also in Smallville. As soon as I see his he name, plays, I'll know he who played he played Doomsday is. in Smallville. Um, uh, Sam Witwer, Sam Witwer, because he plays, uh, yeah. The, the, the uh, emperor a lot in the animated stuff. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, oh, he's yeah, the voice yeah, he of the does, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so Sam was nerd, a super Star Wars geek, and he was auditioning for the role. And he said the reason he got the role, they sat him down in a room, and they were like, "Hey, we need you to act the scene out. If you played Star Wars: The Force Unleashed, one, you know him being a dark side mm. apprentice." Vader is like, hey, uh, he's trying to get him to assemble a lightsaber piece saber piece by piece, and Star Killer can't do it. Like Gareth can't. Gareth Malik is his uh, real name. He can't do it, and he's struggling. And Sam is like pounding his fist together, and veins are popping out his head, and he's probably sweating in real life. He's real, real intense for what's supposed to be a very peaceful and um easy and fluid ability for uh for any jedi knight and they pulled him aside and they're like bro why are you trying so hard in this scene like i i don't really that wasn't even in the script what are you trying so hard for he's like you think a dark apprentice would know how to peacefully assemble a lightsaber like you think that would be no he's gonna use force he's gonna use brute force to to make it all work man yeah he's like he has no idea about patience or humility or or ease of use he doesn't know how to bend the force or no he only knows how to bend the force to his will rather than let it come to him stuff like that with actors and when they tell these stories stuff you would never know until they say it is just the coolest stuff man well, we should probably stop kicking out. We probably yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's pack it up, man. All right. <laughs> hey, man, we appreciate you guys stopping by. If you appreciated us geeking out, man, you guys got to like and subscribe to the Further Beyond podcast. This episode should be hosted on Greg's channel. Other episodes are on my channel. I just want you guys to know we appreciate you. And uh, Greg, you got any closing thoughts or anything? Where can they find you at if they're looking for you? Can find me. This episode might even be on your channel, who knows? But we both got channels on YouTube. Uh, we both have uh, accounts on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. I'll be honest, it's not the best place to find me anymore for, for reasons I won't go too far into. It just seems to be a very political and toxic place at the moment, and the algorithm's forced that way. So I'm not going to be super active on Twitter anymore. But you can also find me on Instagram and Discord. Um, and that's about it for me. Um, yeah, I, I expect a pretty chill couple of episodes coming up. For Dimer. Uh, like I said, I expect to see the, the, the extended cast a little bit more next episode. Uh, and then I yes. think we might get up and running maybe in three or four episodes time where we maybe meet the first of the, the protectors of the Dragon Balls. Yeah. Um, well, I, he just spelled it all out for me too. So I, I'm going to leave it there. We want to give y'all one last goodbye. It is the King Hitman and the Mr. Greg Daw. We are off this.